The Altamont Pass near Livermore may seem desolate, but it's home to a large population of raptors or birds of prey. The pass is a place they share uneasily with humans. Here, nature's power has been harnessed as part of California's ongoing experiment with alternative energy sources. The predominant wind resource here in the Altamont is from the west, and it funnels through these uh, steep canyons. And that's why all these turbines are set up here at the end of some of these ridges. And the wind will just continue behind me to the east into the Central Valley. In the early 1980s, when a slew of private companies built the Altamont's wind farms, they were viewed as an exciting alternative to nuclear power. But good intentions may have eclipsed caution. I think at one point there were nearly 8,000 windmills here. We were learning and, and sort of today you would do a study and find out where the bats are, the birds are, and so forth. And that simply wasn't known that we should do that at that time. It's been a costly oversight. According to a study co-authored by ecologist Sean Smallwood for the California Energy Commission, as many as 1,300 birds of prey die each year in collisions with the Altamont's 5,400 turbines. These 62 square miles are an anomaly when it comes to wind energy. They are perhaps the most lethal wind project for birds in the world. The same windy conditions that make the pass ideal for energy production make it a preferred route for migratory birds. And the wind farms happen to be built next to the world's densest nesting area for golden eagles. 70, 80 eagles killed per year. You might relate that to, say, 100, 140 adults that are nesting nearby the Altamont Pass. There might be 3,000 to 5,000 golden eagles total in California. Also hard hit are burrowing owls. The study estimates that each year the turbines at Altamont kill 100 to 400 of these raptors, which are already threatened by habitat loss. There are many environmentalists and biologists that have pushed for that bird to be added to the state endangered species list because its populations have been in pretty universal decline. During the four years he spent at Altamont researching the interaction between birds and turbines, Smallwood experienced these numbers firsthand. We usually found the bird carcasses nearby the turbines. But usually they were found and dismembered. They were, a lot of times the heads were knocked off or a wing, or that bird was cut in half lengthwise or across the middle. State and federal laws prohibit killing raptors such as red-tailed hawks, which produce few offspring and serve a vital role at the top of the food chain. Raptors are birds of prey. Um, they're important to the ecosystem because they keep small mammal populations in check. Um, they provide, you know, maintain a balance you know, across California landscapes. For environmentalist Elizabeth Murdoch, the situation required immediate action. We're talking about really egregious, really illegal bird kills, which for 20 years were never, there was no enforcement. Her opportunity to take Alameda County officials to task came in 2005. The county adopted new permits which allowed the turbines to continue operating with far less protection for the birds than we felt was necessary and also still without doing that requisite environmental review. So that's the point at which we decided we needed to sue the county. When the suit was settled in early 2007, five of the six companies that own turbines in Altamont agreed to a timetable of measures to reduce bird deaths. The measures aimed to balance bird conservation and energy production. We believe this whole issue has been really unfairly pitched as birds versus wind energy. And based on the best available science and everything we know about birds and wind turbines at Altamont Pass, we believe that we can have both. There's no question that California needs this clean power. As part of its efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the state's goal is to produce 20% of its electricity from renewable resources by 2010 we've got a ways to go. Renewable projects like solar, wind, and geothermal make up about 13% of the state's energy production, with wind contributing under 2%. However small this amount, Altamont contributes one-third of that wind power. That's enough to power a city the size of San Francisco. But expansion has been stalled. The, the county adopted a moratorium uh, a few years back relating to any additional megawatt capacity 
in the Altamont until there is a, a, a full and complete understanding of how we could get an effective handle on the avian mortality issue. And that continues to be in effect. Under the settlement, the turbine owners agreed to cut by half the deaths of golden eagles, red-tailed hawks, burrowing owls, and American kestrels by 2009. One of the measures they agreed to was to keep half their turbines shut off throughout the winter months, since the winter brings more birds and less wind. If we shut down the turbines in the low output months in the winter, it's also the migratory season. We might have a very cost-effective measure where we're saving maybe a quarter of the raptor deaths with a very small loss of production. Jim Walker went from the Energy Commission to Inexco, a Palm Springs company that owns 750 turbines at Altamont. He takes us to Inexco's turbine number 21. It's already uh, not operating. Uh, the blades are uh, locked down so they won't be rotating. And in the immediate future, we'll be continuing with the demolition of this particular turbine. It is one of the 280 turbines that ecologist Sean Smallwood and a colleague identified as high risk for birds and must be dismantled as another requirement of the settlement. This turbine here, number 21, it's a dangerous turbine because it's at the end of the row, but it's also on the top of a steep slope. Birds will typically fly through this pass right here. Birds will also hunt around turbine 21. They're hovering and they drift with the wind into an operating wind turbine. Even non-operating and bladeless towers are dangerous to raptors as they provide perches next to moving rotors. For this reason, the settlement called for the high-risk turbines to be completely dismantled. 131 turbines were scheduled to be dismantled by February of 2007. It's now April. It's our understanding that the removal means removal of all those pieces, blades, motor, and structure. And so in order to be in compliance, the companies would need to remove all of those pieces. That may not be as easy as it sounds. To take down the rest of the tower and then the cell for all the, all the turbines, you also have to be careful about uh, such dangers as uh, grass fires and, and other high wind conditions as you get in the summer. Well, the whole issue of compliance has become a very thorny issue in, um, in, for the Altamont Pass. The companies will report to the county, yes, we've removed these turbines, yes, we've shut such and such down, but there's not a lot of on-the-ground monitoring, and so that is a, a concern. Even in the best-case scenario, reaching the goal of cutting bird deaths by half will be a challenge. A full wintertime shutdown, along with uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2 tur turbine removals, would be... Uh, we get us to about, I think, 42 to 44 percent reduction, so still short of 50 percent mortality reduction. We have to do something more. We need a full-time winter shutdown, full winter shutdown, and we would need some additional measures. There are some additional measures being considered for Altamont's newly created ecosystem. Cattle that gather around turbines leave dung, attracting insects, which birds eat. The cows also eat grass, allowing hunting birds to more easily pursue ground squirrels and other prey. To prevent this, the county could require ranchers to keep cattle away from the turbines. One measure that appears to be making a difference is the upgrading of the 25-year-old turbines. In the past two years, 350 old turbines have been replaced with 80 new ones that generate the same amount of energy. Fewer turbines means fewer obstacles for the birds, as well as other benefits. So as we repower with new turbines, we have the opportunity to put the turbines in safer locations. You can also adjust the tower height with the new turbines, uh, put the towers at safer heights above the ground. The new turbines are twice as tall as the old turbines, which puts the blades out of some of the raptors' flight paths. The results at one of the two repowered wind farms at Altamont Pass are promising. We have a 70% reduction in mortality overall compared to what was there before. We reduced burrowing owl mortality from 10 per year in the old wind farm there to one per year in the same turbine field. But even this success is complicated by ecology. Red-tailed hawks, which fly at higher altitudes, died three times more often around the new turbines. Determining the ultimate success or failure in Altamont rests in the hands of biologists hired by the county. They search for dead birds near the turbines to help establish whether the settlement's goal of a 50% mortality decrease is being met. 
So yeah, we're looking for any carcasses that we may find around the turbines within 50 meters or you know, a little bit farther than that, um, or clumps of feathers. Um, a lot of times the birds themselves are scavenged and so you will not find the entire bird. Obviously the head's gone, it's been excavated. It was a brewer's blackbird, which is pretty common actually. You can find them here, you can find them in town. What does it look like the cause of death could have been? It'd be complete guesswork with yeah. the evidence we have. But its injuries do suggest that it could have been a turban strike because it doesn't have a head and a lot of our birds get decapitated. So, but we don't know for sure, so it's an unknown. Decreasing bird mortality at Altamont may help improve the reputation of wind energy as it spreads rapidly throughout the world. And it will certainly act to remind developers to choose their locations wisely. But the Altamont itself will remain a work in progress. I remember the night before the Board of Supervisors adopted our settlement agreement, I said to our attorney who had worked on this case with us very intensively for the last year and a half, well, at least this is going to be over. And he said to me, oh no, Elizabeth, this won't be over. You'll be working on this for at least the next 10 years. And I think that's true.